Hello there friends, Rebecca here, the Dragon Librarian from Farmington Community Library. And Alderaan and I are here today to talk to you about a couple books that we think are absolutely super amazing um, and we're really excited to talk to you about them. So they are books that are, uh, I read surprisingly back to back a couple months ago and I had no idea that they were going to be so similar in terms of what they were about at their at the core and uh so I was very surprised when I got to the end of the second one I was like oh my god I have to do these in a in a video together because this is just crazy that I read them like this one after the other without even really knowing um I was reading them primarily because they're spooky books and I was getting ready for spooky season um but the fact that they are so similar in terms of, even though the stories are completely different, but at the core of them, they are about the same type of horror. And I felt like that's really cool. So it's got to be, it's got to mean something. So we're going to talk about them both in the same video today. Um, we are into the um, the last full week of October, right? Uh, Halloween is early next week. Um, these are great books to read this time of year, but really, honestly, they're fantastic. They're going to be fantastic to read at any, any point in time. Um, they're, actually books that I feel like I'm probably going to revisit um, more than more than once um, because there's a lot to unpack with both of them and they're really really a lot more than just a, a scary story to read this time of year. So the the theme that connects both of them together is the horrors of fanatical cults right which is like a really sort of niche horror to to be writing about. Um, so it was I thought it was really incredible that I just read them out of the blue so close to each other um that it, it must just be a thing that that is uh that people are writing about because i just actually re recently read a third book <laughs> about it as well um but we're not going to get into that one today we're just going to talk about the first two so the horrors of fanatical cults so that is a very different uh spooky topic than we the last one we talked about a couple weeks ago which was haunted houses right so there's really great haunted house stories there's uh we we love talking about them um, but these, I think there's a lot, there's a lot here. Um, so let's get into it. The first book I want to talk to you about is Camp Damascus by Chuck Tingle. Now, Chuck Tingle might be a name that rings a bell for you. If you don't know who Chuck Tingle is, you're probably just a well-adjusted, normal human being. Congratulations. If you do know who Chuck Tingle is, Welcome. Welcome to the dark side. So do not Google his name, especially if you're at work, um, unless you're on like a personal device or something like that. But basically all you need to know about Chuck Tingle is this is his first um, that I know of published book with a actual um, publisher, a big well-known publisher. Um, everything he's written before this is in ebook form as far as I know. Um, and they are very, very short um, very, very niche short sort of topics and genres, which I will not say, um, on live camera here. So I will leave that up to you if you're interested to go and look him up. I will say, however, that if I'm having a bad day at any time and I need a little cheering up, sometimes just reading a list of the titles that he's read, like just reading the titles themselves will make me laugh out loud to the point where, I'm not sad anymore. So that's, that's all I'm going to say about Chuck Tingle. Um, so this is his first published book with a actual well-known publisher. Um, people were very excited when this came out because he was like, oh my, they're like, oh my God, he's writing an actual book. He's writing an actual horror book. This is crazy. So I read it because I was really excited to read an, <laughs> a full length novel by this author, um, because of how bizarre his previous works have been. So, what I didn't expect was to fall completely in love with this story. Um, and it took me by surprise in every way imaginable. It's well written. It's very deep and insightful. It's very scary. Um, and it's very short too. Like it's, it's not very long. I want to say it's definitely less than, yeah, less than 250 pages. So if, if you're looking for, you know, a short little slice of a book, this might be a good pick for you, um, especially since it is very scary. So this is about a community in Montana that has a claim to fame, which is they have the only 100% successful gay conversion camp, um, where being, being that everybody that is sent to this camp comes out of it not gay anymore. So if you don't know what a gay conversion camp is, um, it is an extremely harmful, harmful uh, practice where 
um, these these places, institutions, camps, whatever you want to call them, um, use really awful methods to try to um, scare queer people into being heterosexual. And now it's been it's been statistically, scientifically proven that they do not work. Um, it's been proven that they are extremely harmful and most states do have them, they are illegal now. Um, but in this book, this, this town in Montana has a, a place like this institution that is 100% successful. And our main character, Rose, has gone to this camp. Um, she doesn't really remember about what happened there, but she just knows that, you know, she went there and, and everything is fine now. But everything is not fine because some weird, weird things are starting to happen. She notices sometimes that she doesn't have a shadow. Um, she notices sometimes that when she starts to have thoughts that are a, a little bit what, you know, her family would consider abnormal, something horrible happens. She sees this really terrifying apparition. Um, and in one case, somebody that she was um, thinking about is actually killed in a very gr gruesome way. So she's starting to question what is going on in her life. And she's starting to question, you know, her, her family. And she's starting to question her religion. Cause this is a very deeply, deeply religious, um, town that she lives in. This institution is very deeply religious as many of those conversion camps can be. Um, and she's starting to question everything. Like what is going on? Something is not right. Something is wrong with me because she doesn't have any memories of going to this camp. She doesn't even remember that she was there, but they're starting to slowly come back. And, you know, she has to try to unravel this mystery, but also try to tear down, you know, the things that are going on in this town. I don't want to give away what exactly they, they do at this camp to, to scare you straight, basically, for lack of a better term, um, because it's, I think, a part of the reading process that's just really exhilarating, but it's very ingenious. I, I was like, wow, this this is really, really cool to read about. So um, a couple things with this. If you are somebody who is has recently deconstructed from your faith, if you're somebody that is in the process of deconstructing from your faith, this book could be very triggering to you because it deals a lot, a lot, a lot with harmful religious practices and you know how toxic some religious communities can be um so be kind to yourself i found it to be extremely cathartic um i think that watching this main character rose go through this process of learning who she really is and not being afraid of that anymore and learning to be proud of herself be true to herself and love herself was very empowering and not a message that I was expecting from a horror book written by Chuck Tingle. <laughs> well, so I was extremely surprised by that, but I thought this book was really great. It was super entertaining. There was a lot to unpack here and just watching her burn everything to the ground literally and figuratively was just really cool. So if you're looking for something really different, if you're looking for something really short, but really, you know, impactful and also entertaining, Camp Damascus. So the next book, I said that they have a similar theme in that they're about these cults, but the, but the tone is very different for both these books and the stories are very different. And I love reading books, especially when I read them back to back like this, that I can link them together because I think that's really awesome. So this next book is by Kirsten White and it's called Mr. Magic. Kirsten White is an author that I follow very closely because a lot of the things that she's written Actually, all of the things that she's written now that I think about it are books that I absolutely love. So she writes mostly for young adults. Um, this is like the second or third of her actual adult books that, that she's written. Um, and she always writes about these female characters that are just so fierce and hungry. And oh my gosh, I love them. Like just for an example, she has a young adult trilogy about Vlad the Impaler like a historical fiction book about Vlad the Impaler, but with a gender cross where Vlad the Impaler is a woman. And it's, I couldn't believe how amazing it was. Anyway, this is her, one of her adult books. It's a horror book. Um, it's very, very scary, but it's not gory, right? So it's not slashery. Um, there is definitely in the previous book that we talked about some very, 
I don't want to say gory, but kind of. There's definitely you're you know you're you're seeing a lot of visceral things that are happening. This book is more of a creepy, disturbing atmosphere feeling, and it is about a childhood TV show called Mr. Magic that was on back in the day. Everybody remembers having watched it as a kid, but nobody can remember how it ended except that it did end and there's no record of it online you can't find archives of it anywhere you can't get it on dvd and it's more of just like this cult thing where people talk about hey do you remember watching that show mr magic and then people are like yeah i remember that but they can't remember much else so this is now many many years after the show has done being aired it did end in tragedy but how what that tragedy is or what happened gets explained throughout the course of the book so the main character is val she is a young woman who was a part of the tv show but then left before the bad thing happened and she doesn't remember a lot about what happened she just remembers that her dad pulled her out of it they've been living in this secluded uh area for you know the rest of her life um and she just doesn't have a lot of memories about what happened there well at the beginning of the book, her dad has passed away. And at the funeral, she is confronted by the other kids that were in this show with her, also all adults now, obviously. Um, and they're like, hey, there's this reunion for the show happening back where it used to be filmed. Um, you know, everybody wants you to be there. We've been looking for you. You've been like off the grid. And she doesn't remember a lot about us. So she's like, yeah, I guess. I, I mean, she, you know, she's recovering from her dad dying. Um, and they go, and they go to this house, the same house where everything was filmed, and there is just something very, very creepy and very, very wrong about the whole experience. Um, the elect There's, like, weird things with the electricity. There's weird, weird things with the people in the town where they're all just, like, kind of scared of these people, and they don't really know what's going on. Um, and I can't give too, too much away other than that because you really have to read this to get the full scope of what is going on but this is also not a very long book like the previous one we talked about as well so um but it is also another story about cults that can be horrifying and also about agency personal agency and rising up from the you know the ashes of your past and just creating yourself anew which is like the previous book as well. And the main character, Val, I really loved watching her grow because she starts out as this really uncertain, like kind of scared all the time and not knowing what to believe in or what's going on person to being just an incredible, incredible character. Um, the ending was awesome. It was oh, definitely a surprise. It was not what I was expecting, but it couldn't have been more perfect for this book absolutely perfect and I do have to say that when you're done reading it and don't read this before you read the book but the, the author has written a personal afterward to this book that I think is very very important to read um it gives some things away about the story so don't read it first but when you're done reading this book you have to read the afterward because the author talks about a lot of her personal experiences that influenced this book and really like why she wrote it and stuff like that. So what is it now that we're getting to the end of October, what is it about these types of stories about scary stories about horror stories that could be so comforting to some people, right? I mean, I'm definitely one of those people who um, Stephen King is one of my comfort authors, like, and I always used to think it was really strange, like, why? do things like this? Why do I find them comforting? Why are they so entertaining? Why are they so exciting? Why do I, why do people gravitate towards them? And the reason why is because, or one of the reasons anyway, is because reading scary stories is a way of experiencing fear in a safe way. So it's a way of experiencing the fear in a contained package that you can then step back from and then you're okay right? So no matter what is going on with the characters in the story, no matter what is going on in the plot or whatever, it's going to be okay for you because you can set it down and step aside. And it's a way of safe, safely experiencing these feelings, you know, in an environment where you can't get hurt. So I think that these two books particularly are really great for that kind of like cathartic release. Um, and they're just really entertaining too. Like the stories are phenomenal. I could not believe how amazing these books were. Um, but, you know, definitely give them a shot. 
I, you don't have to read them back to back like I did. That was just a crazy coincidence that led me to that. But uh, I think it, it's definitely interesting to read both of them and then see the different ways in which they connect or in the ways that they, they don't connect, right? So this one, Mr. Magic by Kirsten White. And this one, Camp Damascus by Chuck Tingle. And they are both available at Farmington Community Library. Well, that's what we've got for you guys today. I hope that these books sound really exciting and interesting and that, you know, there's a lot to unpack with both of them, um, but they make for really engaging reading experiences. Uh, and like I said, they are available from Farmington Community Library, so you can pick them up there. Um, and also, thank you so, so much for, uh, for watching, my friends, and have a wonderful rest of the week.